Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for this privilege that we have to minister to your people. I ask that your spirit would breathe upon your word, make it life and make it strength and power in the spirit of everyone that will be receiving your word. I ask that, Lord, skills of ignorance, skills of darkness, skills that have blinded the minds of people will fall off their hearts right now to receive the engrafted word with meekness. And I ask that even as these words enter into their spirit, it will quicken them, it will rejuvenate them, and it will transform their lives and their words. Their stories will be changed and they will never remain the same again. Thank you because your words are blessings and they will tremendously answer to the very impact and the influence that the word has in its definite essence. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So this evening, I want to share with us very briefly on a subject um, titled out of this world and um, I would like to just lay a few blocks that I will build on eventually um, when we talk about the concept out of this world um, the first approach I would like to bring to the subject even as I attempt to to travel this evening is the fact that um, the origin of man the origin of man, the essence of man, the purpose of man, everything about this engineering, this divine architecture called man, is rooted in a realm and a dimension that is deeper and, and, and farther away from the visible realm. You know, if you study the scriptures carefully and you look at this species called man, you would realize that um, the totality of man's essence is not locked up within the, the frame of the visible world. Man is, is encapsulated in this body in order to give expression to an essence and a purpose that is divine. So if you judge man, the totality of man, based on the envelope in which he is found in, then you have not understood the intelligence, the wisdom that framed this, this, this machine called man, this being called man. And in order to understand who man is and the purpose of man, the capacities of man, you have to travel through man into the very depths and crucible where the wisdom for his creation was crystallized and you journey back to God himself you know the Bible said in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 he said in the beginning God Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 God created the heavens and the earth he said in the beginning Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 he said God created the heavens and the earth now before the the process the project and the protocol of creation was ever instituted the being called god was already introduced that means god is separate from creation even though he is intrinsically connected to creation because creation came out from within him god is however separate from creation so he said in the beginning god god existed before the beginning god is outside the realms of creation before the heavens and the earth was created he was so he is the one who was who is and who is to come he was before the beginning so before the beginning ever was god was so in the beginning god god was the one that created all things that began from the beginning himself is apart from the beginning he has no origin he has no beginning he has no end the beginning is a reference in god the same way the end is another reference in god now before the beginning before creation ever began god was and if we journey into genesis 1 26 the bible said the same god that was before the project of creation ever began the same god that existed predated the beginning this same god spoke and he said let us make man in our own image after our likeness and he said he made he created the man male and female and how did he do it he didn't create the man from the particles of the heavens and the earth the 
tangible substance of the earth and the intangible substance of the heavens were not the material with which he engineered the man he brought the man from within himself the god remember i began by by sharing with us that in the beginning god was god actually was before the beginning now when god wanted to create man the essence of man he didn't pick man from the heavens and the earth that he created he brought man from within himself the word created is the word bara he brought the man from within himself so the essence of man predates the beginning man predates the beginning man predates everything god made the heavens and the earth is not as old as the man the man was only brought into the heavens and the earth but the man was in god because the man was breathed out of god so even though it looks as if the, the heavens and the earth existed before the man the man actually existed as an intangible seed of eternity in the bowels of god so god went deep into himself and he brought the man from within himself and introduced him into the context that began which is the earth now when god brought this man into the earth that he created god wanted the man to have legality to function in the earth so the only way the man could have legality to function in the earth was for god to take the earth and to encase this man that he brought out from within himself so that this man can interact with the visible realm now the man interacting with the visible realm did not come from the visible realm he came from the bowels of elohim he is as deep and as ancient as elohim because he is of the substance of elohim he is not of the substance of the earth he's not of the substance of the heaven he is of the substance of elohim because elohim brought him out from within himself for him to function legally in this realm he had to be clothed with this body but this body not, is not necessarily the reality of the man. The reality of the man is the reality of God because he came from within God. If an astronaut were to travel to space, for instance, he would need to wear a space jacket. Now, the space jacket he wears is to give him legality to function within the regions of space. But beyond the space jacket, the astronaut is of another substance this is who man is man is not of this world man is of god man came from god man is of the substance of god he is clothed with flesh so that he can function in this realm but if man does not understand his essence and his nativity he will be colonized by this world and he will begin to function and live like a creature of time whereas originally he is a creature of, of eternity so when we talk about out of this world we are trying to examine the things that existed before the foundations of the world we are trying to talk about the nativity of man we are trying to talk about the essence of the man we are trying to talk about the possibilities that this man has and can carry and can express and can live in and can do or become this is the emphasis of our sub of our study tonight now, it happens to be that the man that God brought out from within himself he kept him in this world because God wanted the man to participate in the experience of creation to 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 experience the things that God experiences remember before God said let us make man God had existed for ageless aeons God dwelt in God. God did not dwell in eternity. God actually dwelt in God. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16, it said God dwells in light that is unapproachable. And the Bible also referred to God as light. So light was dwelling in light. That means God dwelt in God. God lived in God. God never lived in heaven. God never lived on earth. God never lived in eternity because eternity itself had not existed. God lived in God. Now, God was giving expression to what God does because God has a life 
the life of God, the ways of God, the doings of God, the, 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 the displays of God. For example, the Bible said in Genesis, in Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, that God created all things for his pleasure. So the way God has pleasure is to display power in creation. So when God wants to play, God doesn't go playing football. God doesn't go playing cricket. God doesn't play rugby. When God wants to play, God begins to create. That display of power is the way God plays. So when God created the world, it was his way of having pleasure. Now he wanted to introduce this man who is a creature of eternity, who is an extension of the divine. He wanted to introduce him into the dimensions and the lifestyle of God. So he placed the man in the garden of Eden and he told the man dress it and keep it. What he was telling the man to do is that I want you to learn the ways of God. I want you to, to live the life of God. I want you to experience the experiences of God. It's just like a mother eagle. When he gives birth to a young eagle, what he does is that he takes the young chick to the sky and he allows the chick falling to the ground. Why the, the young eagle is falling to the ground? The young eagle learns to flap her wings. As the eagle begins to flap her wings, most times it goes to fall and the mother eagle picks it up again and he allows it to do that over and over and over until the young eagle masters how to mount the wind. So what God did for the man was to put him in the garden to learn how to cultivate and to keep the same protocol that God instituted. Remember, the whole earth was not like the garden. The Bible said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. So Eden was not of the earth. God downloaded Eden from heaven. In in Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 11, you will hear in verse 13 how God said, Eden, the mountain of God. So God brought Eden from heaven to earth. So God was expecting the man, the same way I made this world out of chaos, cause Eden to dominate the earth realm. So the man was actually living on the face of the earth as a God over the visible universe. The same way God is God over the invisible universe. So everything the man was doing was actually an attempt of God of educating the man in the school of gods. So he will master how to live like a God. So what the man was doing in the garden, for example, he looked upon the animals, he called the names of the animals, Genesis 2, 2, 2, 19, and the Bible said that was the name thereof. So every name the man called the animals, if you entered into the God archive and you looked upon the name, the name the man called the animal was the same name God called the animal. So the, the, the environment of Eden was actually a school of the spirit for the man to learn how to resonate at the frequency of God. Are we together now? Now, as he is resonating at the frequency of God, he is growing into the God class until he takes his place among the princes in the galaxies of God. But unfortunately, something went wrong. A creature that had been banished to the earth wanted to make the man also a creature of the earth. And he knew the only way to achieve that was to cause the man to go the way of rebellion. So he led the man the way of rebellion. And when the man rebelled against God, the man was ejected from the school of the spirit called the Garden of Eden, where he learned the ways of God. And again, another law of the spirit was activated because whoever you yield yourself, servants to obey the servant of him you are whom you have obeyed so instantly the man became the servant of the devil the man took upon himself the nature of the devil he was no longer growing in the orientation of god he took the orientation of the serpent that was when the man became a creature of this world but when we talk about out of this world experience we are looking about the pathway we navigate to go back into the eternal dimension which is our original nativity we are talking about the route that we must travel back the journey back into god the journey into the realm of god where we live like god on earth because that was the original design the design that was lost remember in psalm 82 from verse 1 to 5 the bible talking about man and he said he know not neither would he understand he said he will fall like one of the princes they walk on in darkness the foundation of the earth is out of course the man who is supposed to be a god have fallen like one of the princes how should this man journey back into god the way to journey back into god is what i want to talk about tonight and that is the reality that brings you into the experience of out of this world and the first thing about it is the man coming back into Christ because when the man fell when the man became a creature of time 
when the man became a creature of earth instead of a creature of heaven on account of the rebellion in the garden of eden or on account of the fall when the man became a fallen being there was nothing he could do to become what he wanted to do so from adam down to malachi and even from malachi to the era of the pharisees and the sadducees men were trying and struggling to become creatures of heaven and it was impossible the only way that was going to happen was for god to send another man out of heaven to come to earth so that he will make the men of earth to become the men of heaven so he said god became man that man will become god he said the son of god became the son of man that the sons of men may became this become the sons of god that is what paul called in first timothy 3 16 the mystery of godliness god becoming flesh and man becoming spirit the only way this journey can be achieved is for the man to come back into christ if the man doesn't come back into christ he remains the old man he remains of the old nature out of this world will only be a cliche to him it's not enough to talk about it it's not enough to believe it there is a definite protocol that you must follow in order to live this life and if you are not living this life you are not a christian the christian life is not a religious life the christian life is the life of god expressed through a man the christian life is actually divinity expressed through humanity the christian life is actually man becoming a representative of god in a fallen world to the degree that he reveals god to his generation this is what this faith is about this is not another faith of people gathering together trying to please god trying to impress god no it's actually a journey back into the divine so that we become the eternal creatures that we were from the foundations of the world without corruption exactly as god himself is john said in first john chapter 4 verse 17 he said as he is so are we in this world how does this protocol take place the first thing is what we call the new birth experience these things look simple but it is the journey into the realms of god it is the journey into the dimensions of the divine it looks simple but they are the most novel truths that the world has ever has ever known in john chapter 1 from verse 1 the bible said in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made in him was life the life was the light of man he said the light shines in the darkness the darkness understood it not he said there was a man sent from god the same came for a witness the idea of the witness the purpose of the witness it what it what he revealed re revealed in verse 12 he said as many as believed him to them he gave power to become the sons of god so the first thing the first protocol in the out of this world experience is the new birth it is to be born of god is to be god bets you afresh so you carry the dna of god the nature of god the life of god and the essence of god if a man is not born of god there is no way he can live the out of this world experience it will be impossible for him to do that because he is dead in sin he is a slave of the flesh so the first thing god did was that he didn't come to give man orientation when god wanted to deal, handle israel in the wilderness they told god whatever you ask us to do we will do they thought they could live the heavenly life by natural abilities and they tried it for 1500 years it didn't work the bible said no man kept the law according to the law was no man justified there was no justification by the law because it was impossible you can't live the heavenly life by fleshly abilities so what did god do it was a waste to come and give orientation to men you could come and teach men how to be good men men can even become monks and meditate on good but their standard their moral standard their standards of life and living will be at the human level the only way god could bring us into his realm was first of all to give birth to us imagine if you bring a baboon to your house you can train the baboon teach the baboon everything you do but it will be impossible for that baboon to be part of your family because the dna of the baboon is of the monkeys and he can never be a man 
So there was no way God can give man orientation to become a creature of heaven again. It was impossible. So the first thing God did was that he came and gave man his own life. John 3 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So that scripture was teaching us how to be born of God. How to be born of God is not to enter into the womb of God. The way you are born of God is to accept, believe in his son that he sent into the world and confess him as your Lord. The moment that is done in the spiritual context a whole lot of spiritual possibilities take place that makes you become a legal child of God. In Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10, he said, If we believe with our heart the Lord Jesus and we confess with our mouth, we will be saved. He said, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the moment you believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins, that Jesus was buried, rose from the dead for your justification, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is now the Lord of your life, something happens to you. You become a new species. You are no longer of this world. You are born of the heavenly diamond, of the heavenly material. He said in Ephesians chapter 2 verse, verse 10 that we were created in Christ Jesus. So what happens is that you are of a new essence. The raw material for your creation now is no longer dust. The same way the first man was brought out from God, you are also brought out from the belly of God. You were created in Christ Jesus unto every good works. This is what a lot of believers don't understand. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And in verse 18, he said, all these new things, they are of God. Now, how does the spiritual realm respond to your faith, to your believing and your confessing? How is it possible that you become the child of God? How is it possible that all of a sudden, you who, you are the same you, you are thinking the same thoughts, you are, your body didn't change. How is it possible that all of a sudden, you who was the child of the devil become the child of God? What happens is, it is a legal transaction in the spirit. When you believe in the Lord Jesus and confess with your mouth, three things that Jesus did, amongst other things, is credited into your spiritual account. The first thing is the cross. On the cross, the penalty of sin, sin and its penalty was transferred to Christ. And that was, that was where the, the, the balance sheet of debt was made up for. Because the Bible said the wages of sin is debt, Romans 6.23. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now, on the cross, when Jesus was on the cross, the whole sin of the world was laid in upon him and the whole judgment of sin was put upon him. That was why he died on the cross. So everybody that believes in Jesus, according to divine justice, he is included with Christ on the cross. So in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he said he made him that was without sin to become sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So on the cross, when Jesus was crucified, you were crucified. When Jesus was nailed on the cross, you were nailed. When Jesus was pierced on the cross, you were pierced. So in Christ Jesus, you have completely paid for every consequence of sin including death that is upon your life now it is the verdict of sin and death that makes you a creature of this world now that you have died you are no longer of this world you have paid this earth back in full you have made up for the claims of divine justice because you have died now when jesus was buried you were buried with him and the beautiful thing is that it didn't stop there the blood of jesus is the voice that is heard in heaven there are nine voices in the courts of heaven now the first of those nine voices is the voice of the blood because when you speak as a sinner you can't be heard in heaven it will you 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 don't have a stake rather you don't have a stake in heaven the only way you can have a stake in heaven is when the blood speaks on your account. If the blood doesn't speak on your account, your words are noise. You don't have a stake in the spirit. For example, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. I can't go speaking in the courts of India. I have no stake there. My words will not be valid. You see that? So the only way you can have a stake in heaven was for the blood that was spilled on account of the payment of your sin 
to be presented as a legal tender. So the blood of Jesus was the divine legal tender that you paid the just price for your sins. Therefore, you are no longer supposed to be separated from God. Neither are you supposed to be a creature of time or a creature of this world. So in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, verse 14, verse 24, and verse 28, the Bible made it clear to us. Now, before now, the Israelites were trying to achieve it by spilling the blood of bulls and, and the blood of Hafer, but it didn't work. He said, but now Jesus Christ, through the eternal spirit, has entered the tabernacle of heaven and has pre presented the blood on our account once and forever. Now, because the blood made in an utterance on your account, because the blood spoke in your favor, or, on your, in your favor in the courts of heaven, even when God looks upon you, God no longer looks upon you as a sinner. God no longer looks upon you as a creature of time. God now sees you as a creature of heaven. And it doesn't stop there. That's not the beautiful thing. The beautiful thing is in the resurrection. That's why Paul said, if only in this life we have hope, we are all men most miserable. In the resurrection, you were not forgiven. In the resurrection, you were not judged. The old man was judged on the cross. The blood of Jesus spoke on behalf of the old man, but that was not enough for God. Because if you were, if the old man was dealt with and the blood was, the blood was spilled on your account, you wouldn't still be the child or the offspring of God. So God did not stop there. In the resurrection, the life of God was put into you. The life that lives above death and corruption. So you rose up in the newness of life. Now, because you rose up in that life, you become a bona fide child of God. You become a bona fide citizen of heaven. You cease to become the citizen of earth. You automatically became a citizen of heaven. So in Colossians 1.12, he said, giving thanks to the Father, who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the Son of God in light, having translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son in light. So on account of the resurrection, you no longer exist in the kingdom of this world. You no longer exist under the influence and the government of darkness. You now become a citizen of the kingdom of God, a citizen of the kingdom of light in Zion. Now, if you are the citizen of heaven, what is the quality of your life? What ought to be the quality of your life? Because if this truth is not established in your heart, you can never live as a creature of heaven. So what happens to Indians will happen to you. What happens to Germans will happen to you. What happens to Americans will happen to you. What happens to Nigerians will happen to you. But I refuse to have what happens to Nigerians happen to me because I am not, no longer a Nigerian. I am now a citizen of Zion, representing Zion in Nigeria. I'm no longer a citizen of India. I'm a citizen of Zion, representing Zion in India. In John chapter 3 verse 13, Jesus said, the son of man which is in heaven. He was walking in Galilee, but he knew that he was not of Galilee. I am in Galilee, but I am not of Galilee because on account of the resurrection, I am now of heaven. I am now of God. Immediately you know that the possibilities of your life change. You refuse everything that is of this world and you have the legal right to insist on it and the powers of heaven will back it up. This is why we talk the way we talk because we are no longer of this world. They say something is happening to people and Christians are afraid. I, I don't mean to say this derogatory in a derogatory sense, but imagine the pandemic in the world today. Christians are, 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 as, as, are scared as the sinners and the people who have no hope in this world. Everything that happens to the people of the world, Christians begin to fear, to quiver, and to run. We are not supposed to be so. We are of heaven. We are supposed to come and save this world. That's why I said you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill that shall not, cannot be hid. He said you are the salt of the earth. What was Jesus saying? Jesus was telling you, you are in the world, but you are not of the world because you have overcome the world. He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What is our faith? 
Our faith is that we are of God. Our faith is that we are of heaven. So every time we come into a world full of chaos and confusion, we come as light to bring direction. But the foundation is in what? In the cross, in the blood, and in the resurrection. We know beyond every doubt that we are of God. And if we know we are of God, we have no reason to be afraid. We have no reason to be scared. We will live as creatures of heaven. We will live as overcomers. We will live as victors in this life. We are not, we are not, we are not trying to be careful not to fall into danger. We are not trying to be careful not to be afflicted by the devil. When the devil hears we are coming, he runs. I just left my state, drove five hours to another state now. I'm coming to this state tonight to deal with demons, to set the captives free, to bring liberty to the oppressed. To bring healing to the sick i don't care how many demons are here the moment i come they know they know that a citizen of heaven has come only me is enough i'm not coming see i live i travel from state to state in nigeria i travel from country to country and wherever i come i announce to the territory the lion has come i know i'm of heaven and the reason i'm so bold is because the heavens and the earth came out of the god from whom i came so heaven and earth will bow to everything i say because i am of god i'm in alignment with god my voice is the voice of god my words are the words of god when i touch the sick god has touched the sick because i am of god this is what it means to be out of this world living a life out of this world it simply means it simply means living the life of heaven on earth how do they live in heaven jesus was leading them in prayer in matthew chapter 6 he said thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven how how do they live in heaven how is the will of god done in heaven how does heaven exist what is the civilization of heaven do they go to hospitals in heaven that they are sick if you say thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven you are invoking the dimensions of heaven to the earth how do they live in heaven are they poor in heaven trying to survive are they confused in heaven seeking direction no when you say thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven that means you know what is in heaven you are an embodiment of the dimensions of heaven so you are trying to invoke it into your context you are not part of the earth struggling with the earth and calling on god to come and intervene no you are an agent of heaven bringing your government to the earth jesus said if i by the finger of god cast out devils it means the kingdom of heaven is with you so you are not part of this world calling on the name of the lord to come and help us no you are of heaven bringing the government of heaven to the earth this is what it means to be out of this world and the resurrection made that possible so the next time you go into the world go into the world with the mindset of the overcomer go into the world with the mindset that you are a light to the world that you are the sort to this world you are not trying to listen i i hear a lot of messages and i hear people say a lot of things there are lots of people who makes you move a lot of people who make you feel you can never live this life until you have been a christian for 30 years it is not time based time itself is of this world the dimensions and the reality we speak about are of eternity it's not time based the day you know it it becomes your reality he said weeping may endure for the night joy comes in the morning he said our light afflictions are but for a moment if it exceeds a moment then ignorance is the is the, is the problem the day you know it that day you begin to walk in it take for example in luke chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 17 jesus was to set out his disciples same thing in matthew chapter 10 and the bible said he gave them matthew 10 17 luke 9 17 he said he gave them authority and power to cast out devils who did he give power to they were babes they were naive people who did not even know the ways of god and when they went out and returned to him the bible said they rejoiced that demons were subject to them and jesus said rejoice not that the demons are subject to you that means the testimony is not that you cast out demons no the testimony is not that you prayed for the sick they recovered no the testimony is not that you prophesied to people who came to pass that is your normal life those are byproducts jesus said don't rejoice in those things that's who you are he said rather rejoice rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven 
your names are in the records of life. The reason I rejoice is because I know in the resurrection, I have become a God man. I have become a new creation. I have become like God. So I am not trying to survive. I am part of him who is existence. I am not trying to succeed. I am part of him who is success. So anything I touch succeeds. Anywhere I come, life comes. I'm not trying, I'm not hoping and hoping that things will work. If I come, things work because I come with heaven. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said, and the earth, chapter 1 verse 2, was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And he said, the spirit of God moved upon the waters. This is how we function. He said, the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. God never said, why is darkness here? God never looked as if he was stranded at darkness. Why will you be troubled when you are light? It doesn't matter how thick the darkness is. He said, God said, let there be light. You are troubled if you don't have the answer. You are of heaven. So no matter how bad it is, heaven has come. He said, God, if not because Moses ruled Genesis chapter 1, you would never have heard, have heard of darkness because God would never have mentioned it. If you show up and somebody is healed, there's no point complaining about the sickness. I don't need to know if it's cancer or if it's a boil. I don't need to know if it's hepatitis. I don't need to know if it's kidney failure. I don't need to know if it's liver failure. All I need to know is that I carry the life of God. So when I come, I say, be healed. Whether it is hepatitis or it is cancer or it is kidney failure, the moment I say be healed, life comes because the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So the first thing about living out of this world is the new birth. Now when it cry, a Christian is born again, he needs to have that consciousness. I am not of this world. This is not lofty speaking. No. This is not lofty speaking. This is who we are. And this is why our minds need to be revealed. Our minds need to be revealed. Our minds need to be constantly revealed. Paul praying for the church in Ephesus. He said that, I pray for this cause, I pray, I bow my knees and pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom. Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know the things that have been given to you, the exceeding riches. He's not telling you you are going to have it. He's telling you you already have it, but he wants you to know you have it. The exceeding riches that God has made available to the saints. And he said the exceeding greatness of his power that we already have now, because that's the same power by which he rose Christ up from the dead. But the question is, many are not aware. So we struggle. We, we, we try to have what we already have. So we go to God. We are asking him for things that he has already given. But the day you know, you now realize. Look at what Jesus said in, 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 in Mark chapter 11 from verse 22. He said, have the God kind of faith. He said, if you say to this mountain. Now there is a mountain in front of you. A huge mountain in front of you and Jesus the Son of God was teaching and the Son of God will not tell you to talk to my father the Son of God will not tell you worship my father the Son of God will not tell you bow down and cry to my father to remove the mountain he said if you say to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast out and you do not doubt in your heart you will have whatsoever you say what was he saying what was Jesus trying to bring us into? He's letting us know that all power in heaven and on earth is already resident with us. But what short circuits that power is our ignorance, is our unbelief. So today when we talk about out of this world, we are trying to look at the things that have been freely given to us by God. And that's the life of God. That's the power of God. That's the wisdom of God. That's the knowledge of God. So every time you sense or you perceive there's a challenge or you are lacking in anything, you are not asking God, give me power, give me this. No, you have all of that already in Christ Jesus. All you need to say is that, thank you, Father, I receive wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive the ability. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive the power. Why? Because I am already of heaven. That's why I say, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy. He didn't say, ask for mercy. 
He said, obtain it. It's already available. Take it. The word is catalambano. Grab it. Take it away and use it. Come to the throne of grace. Obtain mercy. If we have this paradigm shift, our results will change overnight. The problem is that the devil is running night and day trying to make us think that we are of this world. We are not aware that we are of heaven. We are not aware that we are of God. But the day we know, he said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. This is the victory. What is the victory? Even our faith. He said, who is it that overcometh the world? It's not the man that prayed on the mountain. Is it important to pray? Yes. Who is it that overcometh the world? It's not the man that read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Who is it that overcometh the world? It's not the man that fasted from January to December. Is it important to fast? Yes, and I will tell you its place tomorrow as well. He said, who is it that overcometh the world? He said, him that believeth that Jesus is the Son. Him that is born of God overcomes the world. So if you believe that Jesus is the Son, you have been born of God. You are the one that have overcome the world. So the greatest and the most potent foundation of our victorious living which is actually captioned in our teaching tonight as being out of this world is an understanding that we are born of God and if we know we are born of God then we have the victory the victory we have is not our contention with the mountain the victory we have is our understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus the moment we understand the mountain is just a command away it will give way it cannot stand there are many people today going through a lot of crisis and they are asking God they are waiting on the Lord they are praying they are hoping on God to come and shift the mountain I have good news for you brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus God already did something about the mountain when Jesus was on the cross God was dealing with the mountain when Jesus was buried God was dealing with the mountain and when Jesus rose from the dead God dealt with the mountain so if you walk in that understanding every mountain before you is just a command away from you to disappear the question is do you believe if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of god do you believe how do you join in the path of believing quickly let me show you from one scripture and then i'll end my discourse tonight thank you abba father Romans chapter 4 from verse 1 is a what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh had found Abraham had found something because Abraham also had a mountain Abraham found something so the way he dealt with his mountain was not to push the mountain he discovered something that's what I'm showing you today that you are the child of God that you are born of God and so you are not of this world you are an ambassador of heaven to earth you are a citizen of Zion representing Zion's interest on earth you are not a slave in this world trying to succeed or survive you are actually a victor sent from heaven to bring the dimensions of heaven to the earth so wherever you are you are the prosperity of that territory you are not the one trying to succeed you are the success that have come to that territory but do you know are you aware are you still struggling? Are you still laboring? Have you not discovered that doing it for a long time doesn't change it? It is understanding it that makes the difference. Understanding makes all the difference. There are people that think when they do it for a long time, something might happen. Something will not happen. It's the day you know it that something happens because the authority is predicated upon your believing what you have understood. If you have not understood it, you will not have the authority to bring the results that you look for. So a lot of people don't get this and we listen to a lot of things so we are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Look at the life of Abraham. Something Abraham would have received in a matter of months, it took him 25 years to receive. What was the difference? He had not found faith. He said, what did our father Abraham as pertaining to the flesh had found? He said, for if Abraham was justified by works, he had wherefore to glory, but not before God. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, what was he saying? Abraham was trying to achieve this thing in the flesh. He was trying to use his abilities to get it done. 
he didn't come to the place of believing now his answer was predicated upon his believing but he was trying to do it by his will by his ability he was trying to make it happen and for 25 years abraham could not make it happen and the bible said the reason why god himself did not allow it happen was because if it had happened abraham would have glorified in his flesh so god got abraham to believe and if you read genesis 15 verse 5 and 6 god brought him outside and showed him the skies and told him to number the stars and he could not and he said that is how multitude his seed shall be and he said abraham believed god the moment abraham believed god his journey ended because at that time he had understood that it was not of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god he has learned something he had found something he found the way of faith and the moment he did there were four things that abraham did that proved that abraham had understood faith it's in verse 18. he said who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be now abraham for the first time was looking at what god said and not his circumstances now take for example if you were sick for instance and god gave you a word that you are healed what would you do naturally you begin to look for the symptom you'll be waiting for the the boil to disappear then you begin to thank god that you are healed meanwhile what you should celebrate is not the disappearance of the boil but the receipt of the word the word that came to you he said until the time that his word came the word of the lord tried him but the moment his word came he said the king sent for to lose him even the ruler of the people he made him lord of his house and ruler of his substance and he gave him charge over his household to teach his senators wisdom now it was the word that joseph received that he celebrated not the circumstances that changed now abraham was looking at the circumstance he had not found faith the day abraham found faith he turned away from his circumstance and he began to look upon the word of the lord most of us have received the word of god but we trivialized it we were waiting for the circumstances to change so when we look at the change we we'll now go to the word no we go to the word and the word makes the circumstance to change now this is what it means to live out of this world living out of this world is not necessarily looking into the skies or closing your eyes no living out of this world is living by the dictate of that which existed before the foundation of the world which is the word of god that's why i told us in the beginning god is looking upon god and god is his word god is his word and that's why i said why we look not at the things which are seen, 2 Corinthians 4, 18, but at the things which are unseen. We look at the word. So Abraham had received a word and he held it. And what did he say Abraham did? Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered not his body now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. You see that Abraham was beginning to migrate from this world. Abraham was leaving the circumstances behind. Abraham was contemplating something else now that is not of fact. Because this world is the realm of fact. Abraham was beginning to contemplate something now that is eternal. He said he didn't consider his body now dead. Now, a dead body like Abraham's can never produce a child. A dead womb like Sarah's can never produce the child if you are living in this world you will be analyzing menopause you will be analyzing the age that spermatozoan can be produced but a man who is no longer living in this world he now said well my body is dead my wife's womb is dead but i'm not looking at these things he said he staggered not at the promises of god that means every time abraham is in the in, in, in between to either look at the world or his circumstances as against the word of god he held on to the word of the lord and he began to confess the word and he began to run with the word and he began to celebrate the word that was how abraham lived his life he was living like a madman you know what it means to have been barren for for a long time 100 years and then you come back all of a sudden you say your name is not abraham but abraham your wife's name is not sarai but sarah people will call you mad 
but Abraham held the word. The word bombarded, he bombarded himself with the word until he couldn't think this word. He taught heaven. He taught the word. He taught God. And at that point, he said he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He said he was strong in faith. What was the proof that he was strong in faith? He was giving thanks to God. He was glorifying God for his child. That is what it means to live out of this world. It is living from heaven. That means you are moved by what heaven says, not what your circumstances say. The voice you hear is not the voice of your circumstance. It's the voice of heaven. And when heaven speaks, even if your circumstances have not yet obeyed, what you do while you wait for your circumstances to obey, because inevitably your circumstances will obey, is to give thanks to God. This was what Abraham knew. And this is what it means to live out of this world. I'm not talking about the religious bigotry or the religious fanatism that is out there. Where somebody is not holding on to any truth, he just stands up and say, and say a lot of things and nothing happens. No, you are sick. What is that word you are holding on to? I'm not just talking to somebody who just comes and says, we can't be sick. Faith is not a denial of fact. It is the refusal of fact to have dominion over you. So I'm not talking religious bigotry. You don't just wake up and say, I can't be sick, I will not die. What scripture are you standing on? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me, he will quicken my mortal body. There are scriptures that have become real to me. Because why God took me through process, when I was struggling with sickness, when I had not understood these things, there was a time when I was having headache consistently. And God told me, by his stripes you were healed. God told me, the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. And I kept on that scripture. And I was feeding and meditating on that scripture until that scripture became more real to me than my headache and the headache vanished and all of a sudden I don't call it my headache anymore I call it a challenge and the challenge vanished because this scripture has become real and now when I have pain when pain comes to attack my head I say go in the name of the Lord Jesus I'm not just talking because I, I, I heard somebody say that scripture is so real to me now it's more real than myself that was the journey Abraham embarked on first he believed against hope second he considered not his circumstance third he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief fourth he gave thanks to god he followed this route until what god said became more real than his circumstance and the moment that thing became more real abraham moved from earth to heaven Abraham moved from his circumstance to the voice of God. Abraham moved from his limitation to his manifestation. This is what a lot of Christians don't understand, that we are not of this world. So we need to migrate into our nativity. If you don't know this, it will look as if Christianity is a charade of few people that try to be esoteric and try to be mystical, whereas it's not true. We are supposed to bring what heaven says into this world. This is why we are called witnesses. We are supposed to prove to this world that the systems of this world, the ways of this world is a lie. That truth is what God says. But we must be able to demonstrate it. And the way to demonstrate it is to interact with it until it becomes more real than the world system. Is to interact with it until it becomes more real than our circumstances. The problem most times is that we don't interact with this truth. We hear people say it. We quote what they quote, but we don't know it. If we hold on to this truth, if we meditate on this truth, if we sit on this truth, circumstances notwithstanding, you will be amazed that we will journey from this world to heaven. So why men cry? We will not know what it means. Rather, we will come to them to wipe their tears. Why men are sick? We will not know what it means. Rather, we will come to them to get them healed. Why men are poor? We will not know what it is. Rather, we will come to them to make them rich. Because we come from a bounty, a resource that does not deplete. Our God is called the El Shaddai. He is the multi-breasted one. He sustains all, but he is sustained by none. So we come from a limitless supply. He never depletes, neither does he run out. But the question is, is that your reality? He said, if you are dead in Christ, Colossians 3 from verse 1 to 3. He said, if you claim that you are dead in Christ, he said, let your mind and your affection be on the things that are from above where Christ is. Your mind, your affection, everything should be there. But I tell you the truth, many Christians are educated by the world system. Many Christians are inspired by the world system. Many Christians are moved by the world system. Many Christians, their philosophies and ideologies are drawn by the world system. And then they try 
to get God's result when their reality is of the world. That is where the crisis lies. The crisis is not that the word of God is not efficacious enough. The crisis is that what is it that forms your predominant essence, consciousness, and reality? Is it God or this world? These truths that I'm sharing, they look simple, but if they dominate you, your life will become a wonder. Isaiah said in Isaiah 8:18, I and the children the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and we are for wonders. Your life will become a wonder if these things become your predominant consciousness. But if we check you on many subjects of your life, you will discover that your philosophy is not scripture. Your consciousness is not God. This is where the problem is. Every time we are motivated, inspired by the world system, what we don't know is that our spiritual senses are darkened. It is the spirit of this world that darkens the minds of men. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. Our mindsets are darkened. Our understanding is darkened. And the moment our understanding is darkened, we can no longer partake of the commonwealth of Israel. In Songs of Solomon chapter 1, verse 6, it said, Look not upon me because I'm black. It said, The sun has looked upon me. What is the sun? The sun is the light of this world, the illumination of this world, the wisdom of this world, which is sensual. It darkens men. And when men are darkened, it said they become carnal. And he said, the carnal man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. When we begin to journey in truth, when we begin to journey in light, when we begin to journey in the Word of God, when we sit on this Word, meditate on this Word, look upon Him, gaze upon Him, contemplate His reality, what we are doing is that we are migrating from earth to heaven. And we are beginning to enter into our citizenship, which is of Zion. And when we go out there, our manifestation is a proof and a testimony that truly we are not of this world. When you touch a sick person and he recovers, you are making a statement to the world that you are not of this world. When you speak over the destiny of somebody and it turns around, circumstances notwithstanding, you are making a statement to the person that you are not of this world. But the protocol is first realizing that you are born of God and secondly, engaging God until that becomes your predominant consciousness. You can't think otherwise. Then, you have become a creature out of this world and you have become an ambassador of heaven indeed, ready and capable to colonize this world for God. He said, Philip went to Samaria, one man. He preached Christ there and the city was full of joy. How can one man take a city? That man is not a man, he's a God man. He came with dimensions bigger than the dimension of the ordinary man. He came with heaven, he came with God. He is beyond man, he's a God man. That's why the Bible calls him a new creature, a new creature. He's not the ordinary man. This creature is created in Christ Jesus unto every good works. He said in James 1:18, of his own good we begat he us that we should be a type of his first fruit we are a type of Christ we are a type of the God kind in this world so when we show up we bring God this is who we are but many don't have this consciousness religion has darkened our understanding the pleasures of this life have darkened our understanding the philosophies of men have darkened our understanding so he said you made the word of God of non effect by your tradition but today I believe that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will come upon someone and it will bring illumination to your heart. The word is for tizo. It will enlighten your understanding and you will know the things that are freely given to you by God. You will know the exceeding riches of the saints in life. You will know the exceeding greatness of his power that is available through you. Because as I speak now, I command and I, I, your circumstances, I speak to you and I speak over your circumstances and they are being altered for good, even as you hear these words. Jesus said, if you have heard me, you've been washed. Some of you have been struggling with addictions. Some of you have been struggling with sin, besetting sin. I speak to you, you are of the God class. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you because you have the nature of God. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, as I speak over you now, you come into the consciousness of who you are in Christ. 
Christ. And on the strength of that consciousness, the power of life, the force of life is activated on your inside. And you begin to live above those addictions because that sin will not be your Lord. Jesus will be your Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break the powers of addiction over everybody listening to me. Every addiction of sin, immorality, addictions of fear, addictions of pride, addictions of masturbation, pornography, every kind of thing that is not of faith that have made you a slave. I break those powers over you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I speak to you as a God kind. Sickness cannot attach itself to you. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every sickness on your body right now to break off. I command healings to take place. I release the life of God into your vessel and I command every devil that is afflicting people, demons of infirmity, demons of blindness, deafness, all forms of wicked devils that have made a slave of people. In the name of the Lord Jesus, get out of their bodies. I command ears to open. I command eyes to see. I command growths to vanish from people's bodies. I command intestinal diseases to be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command bone, bones to receive strength, arthritis of every sort get out of their bodies right now i command pain go in the name of the lord jesus if you are sick and you are listening to me now begin to do the things you could not do before the power of the holy ghost comes upon you right now he overshadows you and the life of god engulfs your vessel be healed in the name of the lord jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet i release the healing power of god i command your ears to hear i command your eyes to see i command your organs be well i command your bones receive strength i command your tendons your ligament receive healings from pains and arthritis in the name of the lord jesus i command depression spirits of depression spirits of suicide spirits of manipulation spirits of seduction out of their bodies in the name of the lord jesus from today you will walk in the fullness of the heritage of the saints in life that you have a portion in in the name of the lord jesus because you are a co-heir with christ everything that is of christ is yours and everything that is not of christ that is part of your life right now i break it off you in the name of the lord jesus i release the power of god upon everyone listening to me you are a pastor you are a man of God. You are trusting God for an impartation to function at a higher level in the operations of the Spirit. I command veils over you to, 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 to open. I command seals to break. I command darkness over your mind to be lifted. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I shift you into a higher dimension in light. I shift you into a higher operation of the anointing. I speak over your life. I say grace be multiplied in the name of the Lord Jesus. From this day, begin to grow and begin to experience darkness dimensions of the spirit that you have not seen before i speak over you i say enter into higher realms of encounters touch spiritual things walk in immortal dimensions and let the things that are of god find expression through you in the name of the lord jesus i speak over ministries i say begin to grow and be a witness indeed in your territory in the name of the lord jesus i command territories to open forth i say your me your messages will be accepted the favor of god will come upon you that even they reach among the people we entreat you and uh, entreat your favor i command your your coast to be enlarged in the name of the lord jesus prosper eat the good of the land of your territory in the name of the lord jesus the hand of god is strong upon you and from this day you are moving forward you are going forward you are going forward and you will become exceedingly great like jacob step into your robot in the name of the lord jesus enter into the place of your enlargement enter into the place of your rest in the name of the lord jesus everyone under my voice tonight you cannot be the same again I release the anointing of God upon you. I say, begin to prosper. I see a vision in the spirit. I see a young lady. Um, you are a psalmist. The Lord has blessed you with a voice. A voice of healing. And this voice, when you worship, demons literally flee from people. But in recent time, your mind has been attacked. Because you made a mistake. And the devil has used that mistake to, to make a slave of you. And is destroying your faith. And you can't even give expression to your ministry as i speak over you right now i decree that that siege over your life is broken from tonight your voice returns 
and the same measure of the anointing that you operated in before is not just returned but is doubled in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see someone that have a swollen stomach and you've been having this pain in the, in the stomach. You've lost appetite for weeks now. As I speak over you, I release the healing power of God upon you. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see a man, you are in your 40s, you, you're having issues with your liver. There's a condition with your liver and right now you are living in fear. I speak over you, I command your liver to be healed. Every symptom vanish, the healing power of God comes break that affliction over your liver in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will not have liver cancer in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see a woman, you are, you are handling a ministry, the territory is a bit hostile to you and you are trusting God for a, a higher operation of the miraculous because God, you know that if the miraculous comes, the need in the territory is enormous and it will reduce the hostility and the ministry will begin to blossom. As I speak over you right now, I say step into a higher dimension of the anointing. Step into a higher dimension of the anointing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Enter into higher dimension of the anointing in the name of the Lord Jesus. I release the power of God upon you for exploit. Go forward and prosper. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Please go ahead and speak in tongues as you receive from the Lord. I'm seeing somebody you've put in for visa. You've put in for visa like twice. You've been turned down. And you want to go for the second time. You are your third time. You are free. The Lord will favor you. And your story will change. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not be rejected because you cannot be rejected. As you go back to apply for that visa, particularly to the United States, as you apply for that visa, the door opens to you. And you are going in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing a young woman, a young woman. I'm seeing a young woman, the Lord is putting a burden in your heart for missions, for missions. And it looks as particularly as if God wants you to come to somewhere around East African region. You're having a burden to reach out. You've been sending resources already. The Lord will open the door of missions to you. And the Lord will increase your capacity because men will join themselves to you. And this vision in your heart will bless the lives of millions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release the anointing to make that happen upon your life right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing a young man, you are an intercessor. The Lord has called you to wait upon him in prayers. You've been waiting upon the Lord in prayers. You are having encounters that you do not understand. And at this point, you are almost getting afraid. I'm talking to you by the Spirit of the living God. Be not afraid, for the vision is for an appointed time. It will not tarry. It shall surely come to pass. Because very soon, I'm seeing the Lord beginning to, to do an, a, an extraordinary operation of the Spirit in your life. I'm seeing cripples beginning to walk at your words. I'm seeing a revival break out through your life among the youths. Among the youths. A revival is soon breaking out upon your life. The, the Lord says to tell you, he say, remain. Don't make haste. I lay in Zion a tried stone, a precious stone. They that believe shall not make haste. Stand, stand and continue. The Lord is on your matter. And very soon, very, very soon, the vision will speak for. I'm seeing a woman, you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Your husband is a pastor. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You've been married for five, getting to six years now. I speak over you in another time of life. You will be with child in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Somebody has been healed of pains in both knees. Both knees. You've been healed of pains in both knees. You've been having difficulty in walking. In recent time, you've, 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 you've suffered exhaustion and pain in both knees. And it's so difficult. Rise up. You have been healed already. The hand of God has touched you already. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing somebody. You have something around your throat and excruciating pain. And for days now, you've not been able to eat. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are healed. You are healed. I'm seeing somebody with a challenge in the ear. You hear this noise in your ear and pain that makes it difficult for you to hear. That ear is healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing someone with excruciating arthritis pain on the spine. On the spine. Sometimes it's literally difficult for you to stand upright. The hand of God is upon you. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Stretch that back and and give God thanks for your healing. You are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing somebody who struggled with migraine for over 10 years. Migraine for over 10 years. 
that pain goes right now never to return in the name of the lord jesus i'm seeing a young lady you've battled with the spirit of fear fear of the unknown in fact it's been so troubling that it looks to you right now as if you don't have a future i tell you it's the lie of the devil the lord has a glorious future for you and from today knowing that you are a citizen of heaven a new consciousness comes upon you your mind is renewed step into your glorious destiny that that siege over your mind is broken in the name of the lord jesus oh thank you father Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a young lady, you're about 28 years old, and since your adult life, nobody has walked up to you to admire you. And at this point, you are troubled because you are thinking of marriage, you are thinking of settling down. Nobody has approached you. You are over 28 years old. Nobody has walked up to you to say they are interested in you. And you are, all, you are afraid, you think there's a challenge. I speak over you right now. You are clothed with the garment of favor. That, fire, that, that garment of reproach is burnt off your life. From this day forward, you will not only have suitors, but by this time next year, you will be settled in your home. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for you will do a quick walk and you will cut it short in righteousness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a man, you are a bit elderly. You are a bit elderly. You are giving to missions. You are giving to missions. You are a bit elderly. Somewhere around India, you are a bit elderly. You are giving to missions. And in recent times, you are looking for fresh fire. You are looking for a fresh impartation of the spirit to keep the, the fire going. The, it, it looks as if it looks as if you are you as exhaustion, you are burning out or so. I speak freshness over your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Go in this thy might. Go in this thy might, for you will yet do greater things, say the, says the Spirit of God. You will yet do greater things, says the Spirit of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I give you praise. I give you glory. I'm seeing a man. You are dark. You are, you are a bit chubby. Um, you are pastoring a church. And um, you, you have the gift of faith, actually. You see the miraculous. But in recent times, there's a burden of evangelism on your heart. Because... It's not just about the church growing. You want the church to grow in number. But beyond it, there's a burden of evangelism in your heart. And you're asking, seeking the Lord for strategies on how to go about it. As I speak over you right now, the Lord is giving you the gate of the media. And the Lord says that the media opens up to you because it's about to noise your name abroad. And your messages will begin to spread like wildfire. And many people will come to the knowledge of the truth on account of this message. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as I speak over you now, step into that anointing and begin to walk in that reality. In the name of the Lord Jesus, take it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Take all the praise, take all the glory. 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 There are certain people that are not listening to me now, but the Lord is speaking to you. You will come back and watch this broadcast and you will know this word is for you. I'm seeing a sister coming back to listen to this broadcast and you are exclaiming. You are exclaiming because the Lord spoke concerning your matter and there is no barrier in the spirit there's no time res time limitation in the spirit as you receive that word you will receive the same measure of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus thank you father for tonight we give you praise we give you glory in jesus precious name amen you were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make jesus your lord and personal savior kindly repeat this prayer after me dear heavenly father I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.